singing of the American and Canadian national anthems. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting.
JLD Insurance and Risk Management. Specialized services and global experience delivered with a personal touch. Whatever you do, wherever you are, whatever you need, we've got you covered. By pedal. Again, the good work by, uh, by, as you said, Foster to get out of the corner. And then just a lot of wax out of it. This is a hit on Morrow. Not so sure just where he right takes there, it. Right there, right there. Oh, boy, did he ever. How is that not a penalty? My goodness. It's up there, isn't it? Elbow to the head, and that's why Morrow is down. And he's still being looked at. Meantime, the oil king, Zawana comes in. Goes wide. Zawana trying to throw it in front. And it's off Waterspoon into the corner. Marazzi may remember. He uh, was the one who hit cleanly, in fact, more cleanly, Ty Ratty early in the series. Now, Christian Pels brings the puck in over the blue line. Pels taken off it. Maxwell, quick shot. Baruth is going to glove it and hold on to it. Dan, what has really made this series so compelling, besides all the momentum swings, are a couple things. Number one, both teams score early in the game, and we see that again tonight. Both teams have scored late in the game. We've seen that in the last three games. And no lead has been decisive enough to make a real difference. And that's what's had fans on the edge of their seats. That's what made it full 60 minutes, in my opinion, of must-see TV at this level. It's been terrific. And again, we have a team scoring first this time. The Oil Kings opening the score. 151 in. They saw Morrow at the bench, and he's looking like there are cobwebs down there. I don't know if another shot of him, but Morrow takes that hit from Moraz, and there he is right now, kind of looking up at the scoreboard. There's a the mouth guard dangling. His fun meter is not exactly hovering too high. Flipped out at center. Saunter tries to glove it down. Reinhardt comes over to sweep it. Weir now dumps the puck down low. Ross gets the puck. Reinhardt now. Reinhardt getting himself some room and he plays over to Pelt. Shot right back in again. Warren Brassois making the save. And that officially is the first shot on goal. It comes from a 90 feet out. So not a shot on goal yet for Portland inside the Edmonton blue line. The Oil Kings start back with Saunders. He pass the St. body tips it in, and Merchie gets possession. Scoring first isn't always the best idea in this series. Yeah, no kidding. Third you want to give it a second thought, huh? Yeah, well, I think it's the last four games the team that scored first went on to lose. Braddy takes a shot. That goes wide. Morrow's up there, so that's good news for Portland. Morrow, nice pass over for Berchie, and he just fanned on it. Morrow spotted Berchie at the side, and Berchie missed on the one time. Over the line, you got Kettle and Morrow battling in the corner. Rachinski goes in there as well. Morrow gets the puck, sweeps it around to Sven Berchi. Berchi, his pass off the skates of TJ Foster and shot back into the Portland zone. Five minutes gone, first period. Rachinski, the goal scorer. It came at 151. And here comes Reed. Reed had his best game of the series last night. Morrow. Now Gabriel, two goals last night, easily his best. Shot in by Edmonton and Caruth. Played that rather curiously. Far from the shoulder. Alex in the neutral zone, likes it, can't get possession of it. And it's Lazar. Now Morrow. Portland, cross ice to Ren. I won't miss the booster juice minute in the offseason, I can promise you that. Comes around the boards, out to the neutral zone. A little less alarming with this many people in the crowd. Leipzig, weaving his way through the center ice area, brought in over the blue line. Sanderson trying to stay with him. It's offside as we go down to Peter Labardius. A little more gamesmanship after game six, guys. Mike Johnston in the post-game news conference really felt like his team had an opportunity to carry the momentum because of the short turnaround. And when Derek Laxdahl was asked about it, he commented this way, whatever, no comment. An early goal has probably changed that completely around. Just to correct myself, the team that has scored first the last three games has gone on to lose. Berchi brings the puck in on the back end, and Persuad easily stops and holds. You know, you get a face-off win like Portland does there, and they get Berchi with really absolutely no chance to score, even as good as he is on his backhand. Oil Kings will be happy to have him shoot that backhand from the top of the face-off circle all night long. 
Bernanke, the leading point getter in the series with nine. Kettle and Bernat each have six. Nobles, well now Ryszynski has six as well, so he's tied for second in the series scoring. Pesek out of his own zone. This is Ryszynski, Kettle gets the puck and he'll shoot the puck inside the Portland line. Shot right back out again, low, nice pass right onto the stick of Foster. Foster going in, trying to go around Pouliot. Foster. Can't get the puck in front of the net, comes back to the blue line, low, behind the goal. Pouliot tries to reach it. Wyshynski in on him, Pouliot can't get it again, Kettle's got it. Kettle has it checked off the stick by Berchi. Here comes Nobles, now Raddy, and now offside, one move too many. Mac Carruth and his Winter Hawks, he has played two games this season with the season on the line against Kamloops. He won that game 2-0. He was 32-32 and against Edmonton the other night. Last night, again, a 3-2 win. He was 30 of 32. So let me do some quick math for you. He is 62 of 64. He's come up with huge games, very impressive games. He's been clutching up for that team. The save percentage in those two games that was season on the line, Dan, 9-6-8. Impressive for Matt Carruth. But he's given up one here in his Portland winner off the you have to go back to the second period of game four, the last time any team had a two-goal lead. As Portland brings it in, here's Lear. His shot, or pass, hits Reinhardt as he gets his big body in front of that play by Lear, and that allows Saunter to come out. Knocked off stride as he got the puck inside the line and came back out. Ross throws a hit or two. Ross lost his stick. Ross playing his 51st playoff game tonight. It's Reinhardt now in over the line. Reinhardt tries to throw it in front, did, lifted up high by Portland. Sautner waiting for it, and so is Lear, he's knocked off stride. And Reinhardt back to collect it for Edmonton. Pass off the boards, St. Croix back to Griffin Reinhardt. As he shoots it into the neutral zone, Lazar trying to get it off his skates, but he's throwing himself offside, so delayed offside, so Portland's going to have a chance to move it. And Hansen will do just that. Josh Hansen up through center. Delio, now Patan trying to get it. Bernat being lined up there. The hit thrown on the offense there by Portland, but Edmund is still able to move the puck and will go, lugging it through the neutral zone. And it's knocked off the stick, and now a defenseman falls. That's deck, and that allows Patan to come in. Patan for Portland in front for Delio, and he just missed the far corner. That's wrong, way out of his net, but he's scrambling to get back in. No harm, though, because Legault's got it, gets it up to Samuels, and back to Legault, in over the line. His shot hits the skates, or pads of Rutkowski. And when Ryan Dick fell, boy, that sure opened it up for Patan. Here comes Portland's Rutkowski. He shoots the puck in. Rutkowski will leave it back to the net. And Keegan Lowell picks it up. Kettle then hit by Gabriel. Some of the fans thought that should have been a penalty. Rutkowski, now to Moore. Morrow. Gabriel now going wide on Kessick, or trying to, but Kessick knocks him down, puts up with the puck. And then Rashinsky then turned it over. Here's a chance for Gabriel down to Reed, and he can't get his stick on it. Rousseau again scrambling to get back in, does. Reed back to the blue line. Ren to Morrow, a long shot wide of the net, off the back, towards off the side of the net. Still there, but now Rousseau's got it, he holds on. One of the better chances for the Winterhawks. Ryan Deck falls, and it's the two 16-year-olds in the lineup for the Portland Winterhawks that come two on one. It's Patan and Delio. That's Patan on the outside trying to get it across, and Delio just gets it on his backhand. Really good job of back checking by Lazar. He just can't get there, and really, how about Brassois taking the front of Lazar coming back on the back check? I think there'll be penalties after the push and shove. Berchi's going over to come out with Nobles and Braddy, so the big line coming out for Portland. Chanting LB for Laurent Brassois. That's been the chant through the playoffs. Reinhardt gets it to Samuelson. Samuelson from center shoots the puck in. We're here in the midway mark of the first period of game number seven. Here from Edmonton, Samuelson. Now William Wren. He'll lug it out. Captain the Winterhawks through that center ice area. Shoots it off the glass or 
Jack hit the screen as well. The glass, the screen, and then the whistle. Taylor Peters last night for Portland had eight hits. He led all players in that department. He was physical. That's him, number 25, 6'3", 213. Other guys took the cue. It was a very physical game. One more for Peters. He just finished it. His check, every chance he had, every chance he got. You wonder if the Winterhawks are going to try to do a little more of that against this Edmonton team tonight. Wilson, sharp angle. He'll try this corner now. Has to pick up this stick. Lear is hit by Moraz as the puck comes out to center. That's two solid hits by Moraz. Well, two hits, hard hits by Moraz. The first one was too high on Morrow, but he got away with it. Now a leading pass up for Alonic. Morrow. Can't get the puck in deep. Reinhardt cut that one off. Wilson reaching. Morrow hits Wilson as that puck is shot in. Shots are four to three for Edmonton. And here comes Morrow. Morrow hits the blue line, but it's offside. Bear cheat in too soon. So we're going to step aside. There's 9.28 to go. It's the first period of game seven. Portland and Edmonton on Shaw. Portland head coach and general manager Mike Johnston. Teams have almost traded giving up early goals. How have you liked your response since you gave up the first one? Well, it's been a tight checking first period. That's the way it's going to be in game seven. You can see both teams are managing the puck pretty well and not giving the guys opportunities inside on the rush. Uh, it's going to be one of those games where you're going to have to battle to get your space. From a coaching standpoint, how key is it to do well in the area between the two blue lines? Uh, it's really critical. We talked about it all series. And it's all about puck management for us. Our good decisions, how much time do you have between the blue lines and making those right decisions? Thanks, Coach. Thank you. We know it's a close series, but Portland, as of this moment, has two more goals than Edmonton. Edmonton has 10 more shots than Portland. It's a coin toss right now, but Edmonton with the early edge, one nothing. Lights it in front, though, for Gabriel, and his shot goes off the target. Might have hit St. Croix first. Gabriel picks up the puck. Gabriel protecting it as he goes to the corner. Comes off the corner boards. Reinhardt sweeps it away, and St. Croix's got it now. And he'll start back with Christian Kelch taking the puck. Get over the blue line. Kelch shot to miss the far corner, but not by much. Soccer tries to hold it in. Can't and puts it the other way. Leipzig trying to get there. Leipzig and Deck battling. Deck goes down. Get that puck! Loose, loose. And St. Croix's got possession for Edmonton. Over here to Saunter. Rare shift with one of the big four defensemen on the ice. Sautner and Keck are the defensive pair right now. Now out comes Grenat. He's replaced Sautner. Minkowski is lined up by Deck. And Foster picks the puck up. Knocks it to center ice. There is Nobles now. Nobles in the playoffs. He's a plus 14 for Portland. That's him chasing it down back to the net. They're just trying to get it in front. Wyshynski shoots around the boards. Foster's going to get there. Ooh, right around the defense for Moore. That's a two-on-one. Foster shoots off the goal post. Foster hits the post. We had a whole bunch of crossbar posts last night. There's our first one tonight from T.J. Foster. I've always said this, Dad. So much of your offense is started back in your own zone. I think so far the Oil Kings have been terrific coming out of their own end of the ice. This is just pure speed. Morrow gets caught absolutely as flat-footed as you can. Well, Rutkowski's got not much to do except hope like heck he can get a piece of that shot. Both of them fail. The post is in the way. Otherwise, it's simply a 2-0 Edmonton Oil King lead. Yeah, I mean, Morrow didn't know whether he should pinch or not. I think that indecision just cost him. Well, you don't want to have that indecision, a guy as fast as Foster. I'll, I'll guarantee you that. That's what happened there. As Lowe goes back to his own zone. Pesek pushes it to Samuelson. And Samuelson's going to pop out of his own zone. And the lead pass broken up briefly by Wren. And then the Winterhawks knock it out to center. Wotherspoon trying to get it up for Ross. Ross now in over the blue line. Checked by Pesic, goes back to Watherspoon, a waddler of a shot, goes off the target, and then another one is stopped by Bourgeois. Wren gets it to Lear, Lear's quick shot. That does not reach the net. He'll try once more in this corner. Here comes it behind the net for Ross. 
Ross, not a goal in the final for Brad Ross. That's him with the puck right now. Just have to feel it. The Winnipeg's are going to win. He's somewhere is going to have to score. Legault back the other way. Stefan Legault just puts it wide of the net. Tries again to put it in front, and no oil came there. The winner, Hawks, Wren, has lots of room to move it out. William Wren, check, and in transition, Mirage takes the pass up to Wilson. Wilson still has it, tries to throw it in front. Mirage had to go behind him. Awani gets it back to Reinhardt. Back for Awani, just off his stick. Bouliot gets it to Wren. Portland looks like they can come out. They do. It's Patan hitting the blue line. Going wide. In on Reinhardt. Back in on Brassois. Another save by Brassois on the rebound. Short little shot there by Delio. And now Sautner has the puck. Around the boards. Clark Wilson waiting for it on the far wing. Up to Moraz. Moraz hits the line. His shot wide of the goal. Now Pouliot flips it up. Just over six minutes remaining in the first period. Rutkowski, his pass nearly picked off. Rutkowski has his hands full. Finally the turnover. Here's Kettle now. Jordan Kettle shoots. And Kaluf either made the save or maybe not hit the post too. Hard to tell, but that was a, another opportunity for the Oil Kings. Now a turnover. Portland couldn't come up with it. Gabriel just couldn't get a stick on a St. Croix now. Lifts it out to center. Gabriel waits for it there. Then he lost it. Hansen shoots it. Nope, he doesn't get it in deep. And that quick turnover allows St. Croix to go the other way. And his shot is taken up high by Cruz, and he'll hold on. Dan, two things. And listen to the crowd appreciate it. The winner hunks are getting caught flat-footed. And they're getting caught outward. Watch this. The red shirts. You can't be that caught in the neutral ice area. They're in immediate chase mode. You can't be that. That's getting caught. Now here, simply Legault gets to the net. Second part of this, if we we're going to show you, is they just get outworked. You can't be on chase mode. The winter hops are chasing too much. They can't make the right plays. They can't get the pucks deep. There's been no zone time. They haven't been on the four check. They're trying to use that speed. They've got to get pucks in deep. Turnover after turnover like that is not going to work. One goal, a crossbar, and a goal post. So it's been all Edmonton so far. 1-0, 5-10 to go in the first period. The last three games have been tied after the first period. Rand lifts it up to center. Edmonton brings it up. Pesic down to Lazar. Puck bounces in the neutral zone. And here's Legault now. Legault puts it on to Cruz. There's a big rebound. And another chance for Lazar. And a rebound, and Cruz makes that save as well. Puck's still loose. Oil Kings go to the corner. That's a slow to get up Lazar. And a lot of fans booing here. They thought, Lazar, here's a chance. Oh, over top the net. Lazar with a golden opportunity as he picked himself up after being hit into the wall. And then he gets an opportunity and he shot it too high. Still 1 0. And Portland, maybe at this point, just hoping to get out of the period 1 0. Shots are 10 to 4. Ross puts the puck in. Reinhardt. Now St. Paul. Now Maxwell. Maxwell up for Christian Pels. Reinhardt heading to the net. And Pels doesn't get the shot through. Another chance through the goal mouth. Reinhardt waits for it off the sideboard. Back to Saunter. Saunter dumps it down low. Maxwell waiting for it behind the net. Maxwell to St. Paul. Back to Maxwell. Back to Reinhardt. Winds up. Now down low, chance St. Croix can't get the shot away. St. Croix still has the puck. Big time pressure by Edmonton. Witkowski can't get it, Maxwell does. Maxwell gets the puck into the corner. Nice pass out to Saunter. And that shot knocked down, and finally Porter will get the puck out. Peters will knock it in and head to the bench on a line chain. Dan, unbelievably good puck management by the team that has it right now. There's been so few turnovers, I couldn't even put a highlight pack together on Edmonton or King turnovers. They're managing the puck beautifully. 10-4 shots on goal, they lead by one. You can, on the other hand, give us a, quite a few highlight pack of turnovers by Portland. And there's Rashinsky putting the latest turnover wide of the net. Rashinsky gets it to Foster. Foster. Waiting to get a little bit of support. There's a puck in front for Kettle, and it just rolls off his stick. Almost came out to him at a funny angle, but in a good scoring area. And now it's Reed. 
tipping it in over the line. Portland's got a chance down low here as Gabriel tries to work his way to the net. Francois sweeps it away. Hasn't really been tested with a big save yet. Gabriel makes one move. Gabriel hands on his shot. And it's knocked out by Jordan Pedal. Good little curling shot as he got it inside the Portland line. I don't think everybody knows that the Winterhawks can strike and strike fast. They score in bunches. Right now, Edmonds has got to be concerned. They don't give him any scoring chances because they certainly have the team in red a bit on the ropes. And we talk about boxing matches, huh? We've been talking about that chess match. Doesn't matter. It's a blow being delivered now by Edmonton. There she shot on goal is stopped by Grossois. That's the kind of guy you're talking about. Off the wing, quick shot. One Calgary draft pick stopped by another Calgary draft pick. Yeah, there's three of them. Waterspoon, a defenseman, Berchia, a forward, and Broussois, a goaltender. All Calgary flame draft picks. Berchia, look at that head up. But you know, he runs out of options. That's the key there. berchia has got nobody to give it to. So obviously, as a good scorer that he is, he's simply going to get it on the net. Broussois has a little bit of problems with it. Not a whole lot. Finds it, covers it, face off to his right. His 34 points is the most since Milroy of Kootenai in 02, had 37 in one playoff year. None last night for Berchi, none tonight, of course. 2.07 to go in the first. Berchi on the faceoff, can't get the shot away, and now comes out to center. Pouliot will flip the puck right back in again. Up down, and Keegan Lowe has possession of the puck. Force back a little bit. Then he turned over the puck. Berchi throws it in front. Ready is stopped by Grossois. Ready didn't get a lot on. Charged up, nothing to shoot at. Big save by Boussois. The only time the Edmonton Oil Kings now, this has got to give the Winter Hawks a little bit of a lift. A little bit casual on that turnover there. And very, very quickly. How quickly does Berchi know to get that puck to Raddy? Look at it. It's a no look pass. Watch Boussois. He pushes off. He comes out to the top of the crease area and snags it. Raddy that close to this 20th goal of these playoffs. He sits at 19. Somebody moves too soon, we'll do it again. That's just a case where Raddy just knows that as soon as Sven's getting that puck, he knows where to be top of the slot area and he gets it. And Raddy wins the faceoff now, goes back to Wotherspoon behind the net, Peters. Protecting the puck as he plays it back to Wotherspoon. Winding up, pass at the side, clear shot, stopped by Brossois. Good play from the point, Dan, to, to Lear at the side of the net. You knew at this point, with that last scoring chance prior to that, that the Winterhawks were going to get a little bit of a lift. That's the way it works. There's a fade shot, the path. And again, we talked about it in the open. Brissois simply outweighs Lear. There was only one place that was top corner, and he didn't go there with it. the Saskatoon midget contacts. That's him behind that, trying to get the puck in front. Peters there as well. Lear still has it on his backhand. Will feed the blue light. Water spoon to Rand. Rand to Peters. Peters in front of the net. Lear has it go off his stick. Let go now. Samuelson coming out of his own zone. Reinhardt backhanding it out through the center ice area. And in transition, here comes Reed. Ross is with him. They crisscross, but they crisscross too quickly. And now Reed tries to get possession. He can't. Lost a little bit of sink on that one. By Ross as we've moved now into the final minute of the first period of game number seven. Long pass picked off easily by Portland. Morrill will just flip it right back in again, and Reinhardt with his head on a swivel knows Gabriel's coming. Gabriel hits him, comes up with the puck, goes in front of the net, bounces back towards Morrill. He'll dump it down low and waiting for it is Gabriel in this corner. Gabriel turns for a shot, hits Reinhardt, now St. Claude. Gets it out off the skate to the neutral zone. Rutkowski's got it. Almost lost it. Gets it back. Gives it away again. Brought in by Edmonton. Chance for Max Wiles. Tyler Maxwell. High short side. A huge goal with 17 seconds to go in the first period. Makes it two to nothing. Christian Pelsch is going to be on the forecheck. It doesn't look very smooth. A great job of staying on side. But again, the Winterhawks get caught. 
and joining that scrum there, that attack there. They get up high, they simply expose Morrow all by himself, and Carruth is left to make that save. Maxwell blows it right past him. Nice pass by Christian Kelsch to set it up, and for Maxwell, as you saw, it was his fifth goal. 14th career playoff goal. This is 36th game, and they announced the goal just as the horn sounds. And for the home team, so far, so good. Two goals, two goal posts, and lots of territorial play, Bill. You know, Dan, if you were going to play a game seven in your own building for which you have played all year to get home ice advantage, that's the way the Edmonton Oil Kings played that first period. I think they were almost letter perfect. Made that one little glitch, that one little error, but they wanted home ice advantage, they won home ice advantage, and after 20 minutes in game seven, they got a nice two nothing lead. A goal in the first two minutes, a goal in the last two minutes. Edmonton two, Portland nothing. We've got lots coming up in our intermission. It's the championship series, game seven on shot. There's Laurent Brassois getting ready to start the second period. Anytime I can tie the number 99 into this building, I'm going to take that opportunity. When Edmonton scored, that's 99 straight games without being shut out. So they've always hit the score sheet. And on the other hand, it's now 95 minutes since the big line of Portland has scored a goal in this series. Dad, I totally disagree with Sven Berch in that interview with Peter Labardius. I don't think at this point in this first period he tired Edmonton out at all. They had it far too easy, too easy coming out of their own zone. I thought it was the Winterhawks that made mistakes. I think they can get their goal, their uh, their game going and force some, some turnovers. But this is the first goal. Watch the, the soft pass to Pouliot. Look at Foster recognize it. 51 Pouliot's having trouble with the puck. That's great puck support. And now you get Pedal over there. You get a second problem. Stop it. You get three winner hawks all concentrating on Pedal. Great puck support. Look where it goes. Rashinsky, one chance, two chances, and a third chance. And it's one nothing. Really a lot of time in that zone. This again. You're not going to tire this team out if you let him get the puck wide. Pesic to Legault. Pesic plus Legault equals Swarm. One, two, three. Edmonton Oil Kings in that area. This is that quick strike offense. A soft pass there by Lowe behind the net. How quickly Berchie gets it to Raddy. Now look at the puck pressure in the neutral ice area. Look at those active sticks. Get back. Onside. Fill the lanes. Pelch to Maxwell. Saquon all in the play. That comes in 1943 of the period. A beautiful play some great puck pressure in the neutral ice area and dad is two nothing edmonton definitely deserve it but this winter hot team's got to put some pressure on the offense they've got to get it in deep they got to create some chances you would think there's your goal scoring rashinsky at 151 maxwell that's a big one in 1942 it'll be very interesting to see i think portland if they could have got out down one nothing they would have been joyful about that given the way the first period went but Two, we'll see how they react to it. They've got the quick strike offense, as you mentioned, but you know Edmonton can smell it right now, and they must, they be Portland, they must score next. Burnett shoots around the boards. That's a lot of pressure when you must score next. Yeah. In a building that's got 12,000 people in it, 13. Bossois makes the save, and if that's the case, they'll hit 75,000 fans for the whole series in and around that mark, which is a terrific attendance mark, a record center for the WHL. Now, you watch teams like Edmonton, like Portland, both of these two teams, Dan. When you've got chemistry, you could listen on the bench. These players communicate with, you, with each other. They don't just chatter. At this level, they are terribly good at communicating with each other. Edmonton quickly out of their own zone. Here comes Foster. Foster backhands it on to Carruth. Another shot on a rebound. Pedal right there whacking at it. But Carruth holds on. You know, something that might be lost in all of this terrific series stuff that we have is some of the buddies, some of the pals playing against each other. Mark Pesic, Joe Morrow, both played minor hockey in Edmonton. And Red Rashinsky, Troy Rutkowski, they've been friends, close friends, but boy, it's all pushed aside in playoff time, even season games, and really out of the way in a game seven for the Western Hockey League Championship. Lazar wins the face off back to Sondner. Sondner plays it to Samuelson. Samuelson protects it, tries to get it back to Lazar, swept around the boards. Gabriel's got possession of the puck. Gabriel over to Rutkowski. Rutkowski lead pass for Leipzig. 
in over the line, but they're offside. Yeah, and again, you see what the Winterhawks do there. They get that puck going north. They want to move it. They come up the ice in a hurry, but because there's a little bit of pressure defensively, you see that kind of a sigh there by Mike Johnson. He knows that's an offside that normally a team that's flying, a team that's going at full speed, you don't see the Winterhawks go offside very often. Portland's big line, as I mentioned, nearly 100 minutes without a goal. We still have to get back to Brad Ross. Two assists in this series. That's it. That's all he's got. And he has 22 points total in the playoffs. Yeah, he led the series against Kamloops. He led the series against the Tri-City Americans. Well, where is he? Can't find him on the score sheet. No. A couple assists. I keep looking at my program. And is he out there? He does get out there. And last night, of course, when Morrill's 40 became the first defenseman to score, Edmonton's had five goals from the back end with four different defensemen scoring, including that young man with the puck there, Reinhardt, as he puts it up to the neutral zone. Rutkowski's got it, now Pouliot. Pouliot does have five assists in the finals. Rutkowski's got the puck. He's a plus 12 in the playoffs. They're offside again, Portland at the blue line. You know, one of the things about Griffin Reinhardt that, I mean, really catches the eyes of, right, guys, of the scouts, and I think even as high as he is ranked, he's still moving up the charts. His positioning, you'll see it, and it's a lot of it tonight, too, is so intimidating that even at 17 years old, his opponents sometimes that have little else to do but give up the puck. You know, they don't maintain possession. I mean, Reinhardt is... And you project him at 22 or 23 years old. My goodness, there's a guy that's going to log a ton of minutes the in the National the Hockey League. Pouliot, on the other hand, is a, a terrific player, too. I mean, he's, you know, a high draft pick for the Portland Winterhawks. Fan of first round, first overall in 2009 from Weyburn. When Portland beat Kamloops in Game 7, their overall Game 7 record went to 5-5. Five and five. That does not include the 2-0 record they have in Game 9s. Yes, they played Game 9s, and they beat the New Westminster Bruins once at Queen's Park Arena, and they beat Spokane once in a Game 9. There's going to be a penalty on Wren. Here's a play for Edmonton as Wren actually gave up on the puck after the delayed penalty, and almost Edmonton cashed in on a chance, but a push from behind will give Edmonton the first power play of Game 7. Well, let's just, you know, tie a little bow about, around what's happening here in the first two minutes. What do we add? Three Portland offsides. They can't get flowing. They can't get their game going. Their captain takes that penalty in his own zone. We played two minutes, and it's been, again, all Edmonton. they going on the power play. And they only have one power play goal. That doesn't matter. If they get a second one here, boy, that will be a big lead. One for 18 in the series. And here's Reinhardt at the point as, again, Ross just missed play the puck. He had a chance to get it out. Here comes Grenat. Shoots it wide of the net. Grenat puts the puck behind the net. St. Croix. Runs it over to the far side. Peters gets it, passes it off, and is sent down the ice. So checking from behind on Wren. Minute is gone and the man advantage. Here comes Lazar in over the blue line. Lazar to Maxwell. Maxwell passes off. Grenat's got room. Shoots. Kalouf with the glove save and he holds on. Just prior to the shot, Martin Grenat had a, as easy a time getting into the sweet spot as you possibly can. How does Martin Grenat take the puck from this spot here? That's it, 20. Watch it, guys. Watch where he goes with it. His eyes got to get as big as pucks when he gets into that spot. He loves to shoot. He loves to score. St. Croix to take the face off. St. Croix's got four assists and a goal. I think that five assists and a goal in this series. So he's done very well for Edmonton. Leading score during the regular season. He set up the second goal in the final minute of the first period. A minute to go in the power play. Three minutes gone in the second. It's Gurnett shooting the puck in, but it's good here with the PA. It's offside. The Edmonton Oil Kings have not scored in their last three games against the Winterhawks on the power play. They were 0 for 7 in those three games. And really, that's a... You know, I think you and I were talking about it last night on the airplane, Dan. I, I, the referees have done such a terrific job in this series. 
by and large, and, and, you know, not calling a lot of plays. And, you know, you go three games and only go for seven. That's pretty good. And the old the old part's not good. The seven's pretty darn good. The only power play goal ever to score came in game number three at the Rose Garden. The game they lost. Samuelson scored the power play goal. Off the boards, it comes back to Pesic. Pesic long shot, and Carruth found it and held on to it. Yeah, Pesic just growing right before people's eyes. Bantam, 07. You talked about it earlier, the third overall pick, Edmonton's first ever pick. You know uh, who was taken first in that draft, Dan, was Quentin Howden from Moose Jaw. The guy that went second, Kelowna picked a guy named Luke Moffitt who, from Scottsdale, Arizona, who never did report. Pesic was third. Pesic would have done well at the defenseman factory if Kelowna oh, taken oh, yeah. him. Oh, Foster gets the puck now off the half wall. There's Samuelson. Samuelson to Foster. Back to Grenat. Winding up. His shot is blocked. Good block there by the aforementioned Ross as he stood in front of that shot on the penalty kill. He's got four shorthanded goals in the playoff. Boy, could have Portland ever use one of those right about now. They need something to stem the tide. Here's Foster going in. Chance for Lego, and he just misses the top shelf. Come back out to Reinhardt. Reinhardt now to Samuelson. Anderson holds, shoots. Oh, and that hit. I think Legault as the penalty comes to an end, but the pressure continues. Legault back to Foster. Foster holds, holds, shoots it wider than that, round the boards. Grenat with a long reach, holds it in, shoots it at the net. Carruth on a big rebound in front of the net. Legault couldn't get a stick on it. Rakowski up to Wren, and he pokes it out to center. Reinhardt lost the puck. Here's Raddy, sharp angle, and Versois got it. The ratty speed down the right wing. Boy, uh, T.J. Foster is moving the last three games, and you and I have talked about that as well. T.J. Foster really cranking it up. Every single time he gets a chance to go with that puck, he goes hard with it. Ratty trying to get to the outside, but that's Griffin Reinhardt, folks. You're not going to get by him too easy without some kind of a battle, and sometimes the battle that you bring to that situation, Dan, is stick length. Force the guy wide, force him to the outside. That's called recovery time for a defenseman. How well you recover going back? Somebody moves too soon, we'll do it again. Four and a half minutes into the period. Two shots on goal for Portland in this period. Six already for Edmonton. Beautiful day here in Edmonton. They say it hit 27 degrees, just like yesterday in Portland. Then somebody said it could snow next week. You and I can't even find Rexel. God, got it. We're leaving South Edmonton. We almost ended up in Red Deer. Here's Pelch going in. Pelch in front. Score! It's a loose puck in that spot there. Pelch says, I'll take care of that. What a nice job that St. Bois does that. But just the way he could have easily broke to the front of the net and maybe not have made that pass as easy as it was. But St. Bois did a super job of just backing up, holding back, throttling back, taking that pass, pass for Pelch. So St. Bois has two points tonight. Pelch has two assists tonight. 441 the time of that goal. Here comes Foster again. That goes off the stick. Well, as you mentioned, getting the second assist. That big goal that we were talking about goes to Edmonton. Here's Nobles now. Nobles. Wrap around for Swan there, and the rebound is poked wide by Berchi. Nothing doing there. There really has not been, other than maybe the ratty chance in the first. Edmonton has not given up a real good quality chance to Portland. Yeah, Maxwell Pelch and St. Quadan are really a key line, and we've talked about it all series. They had to come alive. This is Pelch picking that puck up. I don't know if you can see St. Quad just delay, delay. Look at the pull back. Very, very clever to do that. And those are the little things that get you chances. That's the little things that get you 45 goals during the season like St. Quad. And those are the kind of plays that get you 100 points a couple years in a row. Julian wins the race against Legault, but then Legault follows up, gets it to Samuelson. Samuelson trying to spin off the boards. 
still maintains possession. Back it comes. Reinhardt shot. Ooh, that just changed directions and went wide. Legault was in front of the net. Delio now gets the puck. Here's Ross. Weak one on Boussois. And Ross is cranked. Good hit on the back check by Samuelson. That forces the turnover, and Reinhardt leads the rush. Reinhardt to Legault to Samuelson. In front of the net, and it was just intercepted. That was very Portland-like. That rush up the ice by the very confident Edmonton Oil Kings. Full command right now as we near the midway part of the hockey game. Up three to nothing, and deservingly so. St. Croix gets it up to Lazar. Lazar shoots the puck in. Wotherspoon, a little bit of trouble with it, then he gets it back to William Wren. Wren lead pass up through the center ice area. If ever a team needed to outscore their problems now, it's the team that is the best in the WHL at doing so. The Portland Winterhawks. But they have their hands full as Grenat shoots it wide of the net. They can't even get scoring chances right now. Ross shoots the puck in. Edmonton so far saving their best for Game 7. There's Ross flattening one of the Oil Kings on the back. That was Grenat. Waterspoon cross ice to William Wren. Wren crosses in over the blue line. Puts the puck behind the net. Leipzig, a hard pass through everybody and down the ice it goes. Yeah, that's a low percentage pass. That's a desperation pass. Leipzig just hoping somebody's in that area. Nobody even close to it. Leipzig taken down a little bit from behind. Or the Oil Kings get it out to center. And they're just swarming all over the puck right now. Gabriel trying to find a little bit of room. Gets to center and he'll shoot it in. Two Oil Kings were right on him. Leipzig met by Lowe. Centering pass, Pesic reaches out, and there's a rush the other way. Possible three on two. Pesic in over the line. Moraz takes the pass in front of the net, and it goes off Morrow high. And then comes back to Pesic, but he can't get it. In transition, Reed starts back. Reed in over the blue line. Reed takes a shot for Schwa with the pad save. Gabriel follows it up. Gabriel holds back to Reed. Reed back for Gabriel. Gabriel back in in front of the net. And Leipzig couldn't get a shot away. Here comes Lego back the other way. The pace really picking up now. Lego in over the line. He rolls it. He gets it back. He shoots it wide of the net. Lego then hit by Morrow. Knocked to the ice. And it goes to Berchi. Berchi gets it up for Rutkowski and he gains the line. There's a seat. Pass for Brady over top the net. Brady, another great chance. And he put it high. Then it comes back out to Morrow. Morrow. On the backhand, the bear cheek, hard pass in front, Raddy tries to get it in front. Portland can feel it right now, they've got to score another one in this series. That big line has gone well over 100 minutes now without one. Pedal behind the net, Rashinsky throws it at Caruth, who loves it and holds on to it. They're going to free Raddy a little bit. It's going to be Rutkowski with a headman pass coming up there. And that's what Ty Raddy does so well. That's what a lot of that big line does so well. They get to those spots. That's really explosiveness to get by Gurnett. Shot goes over top of the net. There's the stats during the championship series for Berchi, Nobles, and Raddy. Keep in mind, Raddy had 57 goals in the regular season, 19 more in these playoffs. Just couldn't buy one. Samuelson, broken up by Leipzig. Leipzig tries to go around the goal, cannot. Reinhardt with his head on a swivel. Dumps it right to Lazar very confidently. Then it's tipped out to center. Rutkowski back to get it. Rutkowski, his pass broken up. Here comes St. Croix in over the line. St. Croix shoots, and Carruth holds on. Yeah, I agree. This crowd is absolutely loving this. Edmonton Oil Kings on the season down on home ice, if you include the playoffs, are 38 wins and six losses. If you come into this building at Rexall all season long, you have not seen many games 
where that team wearing the white and the red have done a job of losing a hockey game. They've been terrific, and they're very, very good tonight. You talk about scoring chances, the first period, Edmonton nine, Portland three. I don't think Portland's had many except for the Ratty chance, maybe one or two this period. Rashinsky gets the puck on the faceoff, and it's swatted in front of the goal. Kettle chasing after. They are winning almost every race for the puck. The Edmonton Oil Kings are. There's another one as Rashinsky and Dave Rutkowski. Kettle throws a hit of Nobles. Morrow gets possession of the puck. Morrow gets it to Berchi. Berchi fell over the blue line. Now it's Morrow going deep. Morrow tries to pass it, but it's read perfectly. And it's read by Foster. And it's a two on one. Foster with Kettle. Foster! a biggie that was huge it's tj foster for nothing oil kings really good awareness by the oil kings on this play you see how they all stop that's the difference nobody gets caught in the corner into that corner and foster who was in the middle of that play defensively ends up going up the ice on a two-on-one no pass Pulls up, and I don't know, that to me is about five goals that I think the Rockies have scored over top of the glove of Matt Carruth. This is the latest one there, and it makes it 4 nothing. Foster did not have a point in the series before tonight. And Mike Johnson, during the timeout being used right now, trying to urge his team to stay with it, I'm sure, and try to get that next one. But we've been saying that for a couple of goals now. We're halfway through the game, and it's 4 nothing Edmonton. And you know what? They are full value for it. Just terrific puck recognition all over the ice. Here, watch it. Nobody goes into the corner. Look, they stop. <laughs> It's just recognition that you don't have to go get, you know, for lack of a better word, sucked into that battle in the corner because the puck's already out of there. Man, that's just having a head on a swivel. Really having a good feel for the hockey game. He had 30 during the regular season. It's his third of the playoffs. And it should be unassisted as he went coast to coast with it. Foster for the people. Towards the net. Peters now for Ross. Rain waits for it on the far side. Now it goes to Peters once more. Maxwell jumps on it. Maxwell to St. Croix. St. Croix gets it out. And here comes Edmonton once more. Pelchin over the line. His shot. Blues makes the save and holds on. And we're going to step aside. There's eight minutes and 58 seconds to go. We're in the second period of Game 7. A look at the score. Edmonton 4, Portland nothing. Shaw. Well, Kings head coach Derek Laxall with us. Coach, through all the playoff games I've watched, you and your team seems as poised and controlled as they've been in any game in this Game 7. How come? Well, these kids are focused. They want to respond from last night. We've got a lot of hockey left, and they're keeping it simple. How key was the early goal after a tough loss last night? Well, it's key to get the energy in the building, get these fans involved in it. Thanks, Coach. Just about nine minutes remaining in this second period. And let's see if Portland has any answers to what has been a textbook performance by the Oil Kings in the Game 7. Brian Deck out there against Gabriel. Deck 22 has the puck for Edmonton. Playing in only a second, third game, I should say, of this entire playoffs, all in the final. Shot in. Boards. A little bit of a loose puck there. Morrow gets it, sweeps it to the corner. Dan yeah, Ryan Deck has given the Olympics some really solid minutes in the playoffs. Lead pass, here's Gabriel busting through, and he scores! Gabriel scores for Portland to get him on the board as he down the scene. The two-goal man from last night 
scores the first one for Portland. That's a start, at least, for the Winterhawks. You know, it's again, you've got, you've got to admire, you've got to respect. You have nothing but the highest respect for the Winterhawks and what they do best right here. They come up the ice in a group. They have a guy that will try to split the defense. You saw Randy try to do it earlier, and he was shot over top of the net. It's without a doubt. The number one weapon that the Winterhawks have. If you don't check, if you aren't careful about guys that are in the area between your defense like Gabriel is there, they're going to make you pay. That is a big goal for the Winterhawks to get back. 8.20 left in the second period. Only the 12th shot on goal. Gabriel had two goals last night. You can see there was a problem with the uh, boards besides Lassois with two goals last night, including the game-winning goal with 2.39 left. Has now scored three goals in two nights. And as I say, it's a starting point. But I don't think that's going to dampen the spirit so far of the crowd here. I think this is part of the celebration of Gabriel. Good check into the glass. Well, I'll tell you, Oliver Gabriel has brought it all. We talked about this earlier. Gabriel was playing in the American Hockey League with Springfield. And when you're playing there, you're on a decent contract. He gave that up to come back to junior to do the job here with the Winterhawks. He's been determined to make sure that the last couple of games are his best. I thought last night was absolutely Portland brilliant. Scored Portland, and number he gets him on the board here. Over. Against his hometown team, he's from Edison. Number seven, and number 28, Leipzig getting the assist on that goal. So with eight minutes to go in the second quarter, and Merchie's got the puck. So it's in in front, and Noble just missed it. If the Winterhawks strike for a second quick one, then everybody's going to be on pins and needles once again in this building. Long shot goes wide. That was Rutkowski. Puglia moves in. He dumps it back of the net. Somebody's lost their stick out there, so the Oil King's able to get possession. That's Pesic coming out of his own zone. Pesic shoots it in. Rutkowski backhand alongside this near wall. St. Claus got it. St. Claus shot goes wide. Goes back to Reinhardt. And the shot in front of the net. Goes without saying, Mac Ruth must shut the door now. He's allowed four goals on 22 shots. It has not been a brilliant goaltending series. It's been pretty good, but not brilliant. It's just too much skill in front of the two goalies. And there's Bossois making the save. I don't know how many of these Oil Kings have superstitions, but I know general manager Bob Green certainly has. He said he's got all kinds of them. Number one, he was wearing the same suit and tie for, I think, all of the first 13 or 14 games. Dad, he's not a good spectator. Bob Green will go down to his office, watch the game on TV for a while, and then uh, come up and try to get back in the building, go back to his office. But so far, his team's done a pretty good job here. There's Ross turning it aside. Reminds me of Jerry West from the Los Angeles Laker fame when he was being a GM. He'd he drive in the car and just listen to the game on the radio. Goes <laughs> behind the net, Reinhardt trying to get the puck. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. No, no, absolutely not. He's going to cheer for a radio every time. Right, the puck goes to Sautner up for Samuelson. Samuelson puts the puck through the neutral zone. You were born with a microphone, weren't you? Maybe. I'm not quite sure about that, but pretty close. But 27 years of sports talk? Pretty close. Canada's longest running sports show. Pretty Rick close. Top show. That's enough plugs. Shameless plug. Grand long pass out through center. That's deflected all the way to Brassois. And he's going to hold on with 6.21 to go in the second period. You know, the first shift, actually, the first two shifts after that goal that Portland scored where he split the defense. Gabriel did took that lead pass. You looked up and you saw Edmonton kind of go back into that neutral ice trap. They're very, very clever. I saw, I've seen that before with Laxdahl's team. He de definitely reacts to that. And you know, you just got to make sure that you back off a little bit, play a little tougher defensively between the blue lines. Somebody moves too soon. They're going to drop it again in that circle to the right of Boussois. Well, we've been, if you've been with us the whole way, we don't have to repeat this, but it's been a game or a series where one team gets a lot of territorial play and then it reverses just like it is right now. And there's Delio taking the shot. Goes back to the blue line. Morrow through traffic, and that just missed. I'm not 
not sure if that's why I saw it. There's a lot of traffic in front of him. Oil can club it down. Ryan Deck backhands it in. Good job by Deck. Another good shift for him. On the far side, here comes Deli out of his own zone. Four Oil Kings in the neutral zone, so not much for the Portland Winterhawks to go through there. And back the other way, Christian Kelsch takes a shot. And it bounces off the boards right to St. Quan. A shot right on the Carouse, and he holds on. Sometimes you gotta be good, sometimes you gotta be lucky. Obviously, sometimes you gotta be bold. There's a shot by Kalish off the back wall at St. Quad. He takes it off the angle perfectly and forces Carouse to make it another shot. What do you hear down there, Peter? Any kind of strategy on either bench? for Portland, and it's not that I've seen it or watched them draw it up, Bill, but you can tell right now they're very, very certain about wanting to activate the near side defense when every chance that guy gets closest to the puck to be able to support, he's jumping in. Yeah, the problem is, though, you see they got to spend so much time, you know, back-checking in their own zone. Legault tries to get it to front, comes back to Reinhardt. Reinhardt to Legault, Legault tries to cross ice pass, that's intercepted, and Reed starts back to Gabriel. He just throws it down, he has no icing. Reinhardt first to it, Leipzig trying to check him. Leipzig much lighter through a check. And now comes out to center ice, Pouliot up for Leipzig. Leipzig goes back for Wren over here to Pouliot, in over the blue line. Pouliot tries to feather it through. Winterhawks jump on the puck, Berchi keeps it in, at least for a moment. Now Samuelson forces it out. Henrik Samuelson up for Curtis Lazar. Lazar back for Samuelson in front of the net, and a shot just went wide. Legault throws it in front. Picked out the Sautner at that opportunity there. Here's Nobles. Nobles in over the line with Berchi. Back for Nobles. Nobles behind the net. Raddy tries to get it in front. Raddy spins off one check. Ty Raddy turns for a shot. And it's loose in front of the net. It skates, but no Portland Winterhawk can get their stick on it. Back comes Jordan Pedal for Edmonton. Pedal going wide. Ron Rakowski throws it in front, but Morrow has it in his skate. No oil thing there. Pedal and Rakowski will battle in the far corner. Rakowski gets it up to Raddy. Raddy out to the neutral zone, but Berge can't reach it. So they want to activate that defenseman, like Peter said. You've got to have possession of the puck. They can't do it. They're, they're spending too much time fighting for it in their own zone to win on. Now Rutkowski's got it. Let's see if they can do something there. He has to make the easy pass. They're pretty tired of that too near the end of the shift. As no kid. Has to bring it in over the line. Shoots it on to Bokwani. Holds on. All right, ladies and gentlemen. A key part of this hockey game. Wilkins with a 4-1 lead, out shooting the Winterhawks now 24-14, 3.43 left in this second period. I agree with you, Dan. Portland could score, and they got an offensive zone faceoff now. If they can get some puck possession, get this game within two, I still think it'd be game on. Watherspoon from the line, gets it over to Lear. Lear puts it down to Ross. Deck plays it up the boards, and out it goes. In fact, he hit something at the fan, so we'll get a play stop with three and a half to go. Taylor Lear, draft eligible player from Saskatoon, will not be at the NHL draft in June. Why? That young man will be playing in the World Ball Hockey Championship, and we've seen a lot of guys in that. And by the way, Derek Laxdahl played two years of professional roller hockey. Did you know that? He played at Ottawa, he played at Denver. Is that the year that we were doing the Vancouver Voodoo? Game? Yeah, the Voodoo, remember that? I quite enjoy that. You get into that game pretty good. Kesek plays it up to Foster. Foster has a big goal here tonight. Low. Now pedal. Rashinsky. He's got a huge goal. He started them at 151 of the first period. Rashinsky's had a dynamite series for the Edmonton Oil Kings from start of the series to the very end. Derek Laxdell, former Pitt Portland Winterhawk players, are now coaching in the Western Hockey League. Sean Clouston at Medicine Hat, Steve Connor Walchuk, Seattle, Mike Williamson, Calgary, Bruno Campesi at Prince Albert. Albert Laxdell played their entire career in Portland, so certainly they put out a ton of coaches in the Western Hockey League. Gabriel has that one broken up by Kelsch, and then on the delayed offside, it's blown down with 3.08 remaining. 
in the second. You know, I, I like to say at this point that both teams would, well, I'm sorry, that Edmonton would be happy to kind of grind it out with a lot of play stoppages between now and the end of the period, take a three-goal lead into period three. But that you and I have seen, and the fans that have been watching it, uh-uh-uh, there's none of that. In a split second, one team can crank it, at, crank it up and all of a sudden bang the pucks in the net. St. Croix over the blue line, off pass over to Grenat. His shot goes wide, comes around the board. Deck holding it in, puts the puck down low. Then it's taken off St. Croix's tip, but he gets it right back from Reed. There's another turnover by Portland, this one in their own zone. And it's cost him finally to get possession of the puck. Gabriel starts out, Leipzig with him. Gabriel gains the blue line, winds up, shoots over top the net. Mikowski waits for it, swaps it back behind the edge of the goal. Grenat plays it up for Maxwell. Maxwell to the open wing. Fans thought there might have been too many men as Berchie jumped over the boards. Here comes Legault. Legault is hit by Berchie. And now the puck rolls to Pouliot. Only for a moment though, Legault's got it again. Legault working so hard back at the net, throws it towards the front of the net. Legault tries the other side. Carruth makes the save. The play continues as the puck is alive in the corner and Foster jumps on it. Over here to Legault and his shot is on the rebound. And another save and Foster can't get a shot. Reinhardt takes one. Ryszynski takes one. And it's finally swept away by Portland. And this crowd is just so appreciative of the Oil Kings effort at all ends of the ice. A minute 44 to go in the second period. When you combine regular season and playoffs, Edmonton is 51-1 and one when they lead after two periods of play. In over the goal line, it's Foster. Foster. Now Rakowski. Over the far side. Braddy tries to get it. Rakowski comes out. Sven Berchi now. Broken up. Mark Pesic with the pass, brings it in over the line, and then he dropped, stood on his feet, and a shot over top of the net, and Pesic really withstood the Berchi hit. Berchi had him lined up beautifully, and look at the strength of Pesic to stay on his feet. Mark Pesic, last night, remember he was rocked, got up, got the puck, hit the crossbar just moments before the game-winning goal by Gabriel at the other end. Yeah, you know, the way he fought for that puck last night while he was down, he kind of corralled it with a stick on the ice. It was beautiful. Strong kid, Pesic. I think he's even surprised at how well he's playing. And that's the beauty of this level, you know. You, you, you won't regress. You never go back. Lear gets the puck. Now Ross shoots it in. Peters from the sharp angle. He was again trying to get a stick on. 20 seconds to go in the period. That puck came out. And then in, and then offside. And the fans even cheer the offsides. That's how much fun they're having. To think they they had a very, very short turnaround to sell tickets. They've done just a tremendous job in getting the people into this building on a, like you say, a gorgeous day, a, a Mother's Day. And they're out here, and they just can't make enough noise. What a wonderful atmosphere. Dan, i got to be honest with you. You and I have been waiting five years to have this in this building. Oh, yes. Very quiet over the years when we come in here. Foster going in hard. Foster has a roll off his stick as he crashes into the net with five seconds to go in the period. Foster by far having his best game of the championship series. I don't know, you know what more that young man can do. 19-year-old from Slave Lake. Had all of those fighters up there that he had to deal with. You can't go to the net any better than that. And ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Backside. Post. They're coming at Caruso. Full force, aren't they? Edmonton's going to take a three goal lead into the final period of game number seven. And the winner to the Memorial Cup, which will open Friday at Shawinigan. In fact, the Western Hockey League plays on Friday night. Well, all uphill for Portland, Bill. They did get one late in the period. It's something to build on, but wow, do they ever have their hands full to get back in this one. Well, we've seen almost seven complete games, and you and I did the series between the Edmonton Oil Kings and the Moose Jaw Warriors, and 
I, I can't I can't say I've seen a better 40 minutes from this Edmonton Oil King team. It's about as complete an effort to this point as you can get. But I hearken to say, and I'm sure Mike Johnson in the dressing room for the Winter Hots, it's a 40-minute game, and the firepower, the strike power of the Winter Hawks is lethal. Two in the first, two in the second on Matt Carruth. Then a late one by the Portland Winter Hawks. But it's all Edmonton. We've got lots coming up in our intermission. Stay tuned. It's game seven of the final on Shaw. On this Mother's Day, it's game seven. We salute all the moms. Ed Robertson on our crew. That's Linda Robertson and Dave Roberts. His mom Barbara is here. And we should tell you as well that Mother Teresa is here. That's Griffin Reinhardt's mom. She made the trip. And uh, couldn't find her in the uh, big crowd. But I'll tell you what, there's such a huge gathering here. And the buzz in the intermission was huge. The Edmonton Oil Kings, one period away from the Chanel Cup. Yeah, Cam Moon and Andy Neal talked about scoring chances. Edmonton with 18, Portland with 7. Brendan Leipzig is an energy producer. This is what they want him to do. They want him to get pucks and generate some offense. Look where he puts it. All the way back into his own zone. It goes to nobody. Brendan Leipzig wants to get that puck in deep. Can't. Look at the back check by Iwanek. Brendan Leipzig wants to make things happen. Here's the goal. Stop it there. Great job by Kevin Lowe recognizing where the pass is going. Let it go. Derek Pouliot, a defenseman. He's going to come up the ice. Get stopped there. Now, see the two guards at the far right? Wonderful. To Edmund Norkin. Pouliot out of position. Those two guys, they go in real quick. Good job. That is uh, a terrific pass to Michael St. Paul. Set up beautifully by good defensive play. How about Ferchi? How about Raddy? How about Reed? They want to come out of their own zone, folks. They don't want to be playing back there. They're spending too much time checking. That's a desperation point to get it out of there. Good job here. None of those Edmonton Alton sucked it in the corner. A race between Nobles and Foster. Another 2-1-1 off the rush. Wow, what a nice job stopping, getting the shot. That's the 4-0 lead. But this is what the Portland Winterhawks do best, folks. Watch Gabriel, he'll sneak right in between those two defensemen. You gotta watch him all the time. He was great last night with two goals. Very, very good there. Gets Portland on the board, it's 4-1, Wild King. As you look at the summary, we'll tell you that St. Croix has a goal and assist tonight. Foster, a goal and assist. Pelch has two assists, leading the way for Edmonton, who have a 27-16 shot margin. There's Foster at the bench. Wilson on the camera right. A large crowd at Rexall. They know the cup is in the house. They know that the Oil Kings, so good at protecting leads. One more period for Edmonton to win the championship. A stick came up on Kelsch. And Maxwell's got the puck. Kelsch stays out there, gets the puck in fact. Kelsch, all by himself, brings it in over the line. He was back a little bit. Then he dumps it down low. Pouliot trying to reach it there. Maxwell in on him. Pouliot gets the puck up for Leipzig. Leipzig off the boards it goes. Here's Ross trying to chase the rolling puck. He does, just in time to avoid the icing. Good job there by Ross. Leipzig gets it behind the net. Here's Reinhardt. Back of the goal. Gernat. Now St. Croix trying to chop at it. He couldn't get it. Gernat does. Skates out of his own zone. Gernat over towards Pelsch. Pouliot. Now Rakowski. Lead pass for Peters. Up for Gabriel. Gabriel with Berti. And over the line. Berti charging to the net. And it hard to the goal he goes. Bourgeois holds on to stop the play. You got a couple quick guys. You got Berchi on the rush. You've got Christian Pelsch on the back check. And really, Berchi just flat out runs. Is that Berchi or is that Gabriel? No, they do get it to Berchi. Real good back check. You get a lot of guys coming back. And again, that's not the scoring chance that Sven Berchi wants. He doesn't want to be chasing a puck into the crease. He wants the puck on a stick going into the crease. Off. There's a chance for Berchi with one hand on the stick. Oh, that meanly tied up. Kessick gets down. Pedal trying to follow it up. Gabriel can't get possession of the puck. Pedal puts it behind the net. Gabriel with the puck pulls cross ice. Berchi in over the blue line. Kessick stays with him. 
where she's so explosive early in the series, and then suddenly he's become quite quiet the last couple of games. That's him with the puck right now as it's centered. Erchi has seven goals in this series, but none in game six and none in game seven. That's the back of the net. Braddy can't come up with the puck. Now Kettle will shoot the puck in. Portland Winterhawks, one of a few recent teams to go to back-to-back -back series. Calgary was in the final in 09 and 2010. They won the second one. Vancouver in 06 and 07. They won the first time. Red Deer was three in a row at the start of 2001. But Portland, there are too many teams have gone there twice in a row and not won either championship. But Portland only with two in their previous nine trips to the final. They could be two and eight after tonight in league championship series. Samuelson trying to get it out. Here's Reinhardt now. Reinhardt slowly through that neutral zone. Back of the net on the far side, Saunter. Back in to the corner, Water Spoon and Legault. And here's Lear coming out of his own zone. Lear is checked a little bit. It goes to Lazar. So far, so good for Edmonton. Three minutes in. Nothing doing for Portland so far. Ross back goes to Pouliot. Pouliot brings it in over the blue line. Pouliot tries to backhand it towards the front of the net. St. Croix races to the far side. And then the pass right on the tape to Legault. Pouliot's got it, but they almost lost it. Gets it back again. Lead pass. Ross tries to find Henry. Does not. Morrow back to Pouliot. Got it. Edmonton had a 22 game win streak broken in the playoffs finally by Moose Since then, they've been 4 and 4. Ross going in. Ross waiting, waiting, waiting. There's a good pass right to Waters. Going a shot. A great block by St. Croix. And out of play it goes. Yeah, that's good. A good job by Ross to find the only open guy on that rush, Dan. And that is, as Ross gets it in deep, he knows if he can get it back to the point, he could probably get a shot on the net. And that's exactly what happens with even a better block. This is this is a good by Ross. Delay it, delay it, delay it. Find somebody open. Head up. There's the guy you want to get it to. There's the shot. An even better block to get it out of play. Here's a chance for Gabriel, and a shot just went wide of the net. Gabriel nearly with another one. Behind the net, Berchi on the backhand. Berchi holding the puck. Behind the net towards Peters. Pesic intercepts. Comes right up, back to Rikowski. Shot to flex off the target. And Pesic from behind the net. Now will be checked, but he gets right back up, gets the puck. Peters throws it towards the corner. Now Gabriel comes off the boards. Gabriel. Gabriel still. Weak one in front, easily intercepted by Pesic. Pesic at center, in over the line. Shot stopped by Farouk, he's going to hold on. We have the attendance here tonight. It's a huge one, 12,514 here for game number seven. Yeah, congratulations, Oil King fans, coming out and watching this happen again. Such a good job defensively. Gabriel desperately wanting to get it in the high slot. Watch the traffic he runs into. Look at the sticks. That's a weak shot as you could possibly get. He puts it right on a pestle stick and away they go. Unbelievably good defense. And to take the period by quarters. So far, so good for Edmonds, as I mentioned. We're now five minutes into the period. As here comes Nobles. Oh, Nobles in front for Braddy, but just too much in front of them. Braddy comes off the boards now with it. Braddy turns for a shot. That doesn't reach the net. And now the puck comes up to center. Energy has been really good in the series. Braddy's been pretty quiet for the most part, you have to say. I know he was hurt in game one, didn't play game two. By Braddy's standards. Two goals, two assists in a seven-game series so far. St. Croix shot, turn the side and out of play. Yeah, I agree with you. Ty Raddy, we, we talked about Edmonton shutting down players all the way back to the Kootenai series, the Brandon series, 
the Moose Jaw series, and for the most part, they've shut Ty Ratty down. But, uh, you know, they haven't had an answer for Berchi for too much of this series. But, you know, Ty Ratty says he got serious about hockey when he saw his name in a hockey news as one of the top prospects in Canada going through a hockey news in the school library. He realized, wait a minute, I am pretty good. Here's Ross, drop pass, three to front. Oh, and just missing was Leipzig. One move too many. Leipzig had a golden chance to shoot. He tried for the deep, and it got away from him. Puck blown down with a high stick. Wow, Portland that close to cutting the lead in half. There's no team that, that moves the puck when they get time and space inside the offensive zone any better than the winter off. They come up the ice, you count the passes. There's one, there's two, and Leipzig trying with the deke. What a nice job of back checking coming back though. That is a pretty good job, and you know, Brassois just so focused on what was happening in the play coming to that. I think it was Michael St. Croix on the back check. Leipzig did most of his damage in this series in the earlier games. Did have a good assist last night. Just missed on that one. Now six minutes into the third, Gabriel shoots the puck in, goes off the glass. Waiting for the puck is Berchi. Couldn't get it, Foster. Off the boards, knocked down again with a high stick, but it goes to Foster, and they come up. Foster goes plugging all the way through and takes a shot. One off the stick. Then Berchi comes back to collect the puck. Then Berchi. Nice pass, right on the tip of the tape of Peters. And Reinhardt just pokes it right off. Peters is down, the puck's underneath him. Gets the puck to the corner, but nothing but oil kings, and they are just in all the places where the puck is. And it's been that way most of the night. Wherever the loose pucks go, the team in white seems to get there first. Sanderson breaks up another one. And then just a smart play, breaks it up and just dumps it to that spot. No icing, forces the one hops to go 200 feet. But you have to keep doing it, I would say, until they prove that they can score again. That icing is negated. Some people say, well, that's sitting on your lead, but this 4 1. Yeah. And they're doing just fine. Absolutely. Rutkowski. And they know how to do it, too, as I mentioned. 51 and 1 when they're leading after two. It's incredible, isn't it? Try to tell them it's a 60 minute game. No, it's not. That one a little bit too much mustard on it, so that's icing. You know, it's interesting watching Henrik Samuelsson. You know, he has had some suspensions problems. Obviously, he missed a game in this series, but he plays so close to the edge without going over it that sometimes he comes to the bench and he tells Laxville, he says, you better sit me out of shift because, Coach, I'm ready to snap. <laughs> and he's got to manage that. He's going to be a terrific player for this Edmonton team. Four times he has been suspended. Puck goes back out to Ross. Long shot. Scores! No goal! No goal! No goal! High stick! They're celebrating, but Leipzig trying to sell it. The referee, Zelaski, says no way. I'm not sure even Leipzig knows yet. He keeps going for high fives unless he believes that the referee has it wrong. Have a look. Ross with the shot. Keep your eye on 28 in front of the net. There's the block. It does bounce off in Edmonton Oil King. But Leipzig high stick in front. Well, that's what makes him have to reach up. He gets that puck isn't shot that high. It bounces right off the goal there. Ends up going up pretty high. That stick is where? Above the crossbar. That's, the yeah. referee's got it right. He's got it right. It's the crossbar, they're checking, they should check it. But Derek Zelaski, I believe, has made the right call. I'd be very surprised if this is overturned. Yeah, see where it hits uh, Legault right in the backside, and then that stick gets played. I'll tell you what, folks, you can kind of tell where that puck is going because you can see where the glove of Brassois is going. He's not re raising it. I mean, this is a critical part for, well, watch this. And you'll hear the response of the crowd. By either standard, the new one or the old one, that's no goal. The old standard was your shoulders. You couldn't lift your puck or your stick above your shoulders. Years ago, that got changed to the crossbar. You couldn't put your stick above the crossbar. So either standard, it's no goal. Peter, what's the discussion there? Are you in on any of that? 
trying to read Mike Johnson's lips. He just wanted to know at, at the end of the day who made the call. Good call. And that's fair. St. Croix. Now up to Maxwell. The score remains 4-1. to one. Farouk makes that save. It's certainly Portland won. It's a magic, but the call was right. Wasn't really that close. So that's Leipzig celebrating a goal tonight. Last night, Raddy celebrated one that didn't go in. His actually never did go in. Long pass. In over the line. Offside. One move too many at the line. You know, Christian Pelsch has an interesting path on getting to this Edmonton team. He was spotted by the Edmonton Oilers, actually, at the under-18 in Belarus. He was drafted by the Edmonton Oil Kings, 19th in the CHL import draft, and signed recently by the Edmonton Oilers. Well, he'd go back into the draft and they'd lose it. His dad watched the results at home in Latvia. He started screaming, started yelling, started singing. That's the party thing, I guess, in Latvia. The shot, the player. The shots go at 31 to 60. This is by far the lowest shot total the Winterhawks have had in this series. Edmonton, by the way, as they'll go on to win the shot clock battle here. In 20 playoff games, only outshot six times. 31-16 the count right now. I, I mean, everything really started for the Oil Kings. Well, two things. Number one, they walked in this building and they saw there was, what, 12,000 fans there? Mm -hmm. well, and then now, here's Raddy going in and it just went wide of the net. And they scored 151 in the period to get the crowd into it. And boy, they've still been on cruise from that point on. Short-handed all night, so that's the partner. They've been letter perfect. Litkowski out to Berchi. Raddy hits the hole. Raddy back to Berchi. Cuts in sticks and skates. Berchi trying to throw it in front. Gets it right back again. Tries to wrap around. Couldn't do that on the back end. He'll feed the point. Waterspoon puts it behind the net. Raddy's got it. Still Raddy. Back to the line. Rutkowski, cross ice it goes. Pass in front for Raddy. Turn, spins, wait, shoots, and Brossois with the glove reached out and said, that's that. Well, again, you see the, the problem Sven Berchie's having. He comes up the ice, he's got nowhere to go with it. Tries to pass to Raddy, gets the puck back. Nothing but white shirts around him. He gets the puck in, adds him. He's got such good puck possession skills. It's going to end up behind the net on, on that far side. And again, he ran into nothing but traffic. Working's done a terrific job on him. He saw it going so cleanly by Portland that Pouliot couldn't keep it in. They got a lot on the face-off win, so Pouliot starts back. Overskated by Gabriel. And Morrow will try his luck. just not letting Portland have what we call their best player on the ice. Who's been the best player for Portland tonight? I can't find who their best one would be. One of those games where you yeah, start know. picking those three stars, and if you go beyond three, you probably get six, seven, eight deep before you find a Portland player. Yeah, big goal. Yeah, I agree with you. Maybe Reed, nah, nah, I, Gabriel, I, I, Gabriel. That, that was who I was thinking. Number 11, definitely, probably the best player. Certainly the most most dangerous, but it's slim pickings after that. And that's just a credit to the way Edmonton's played. They really have been terrific. And to shut down this big line two games in a row, who would have thought that? Who would have thought they could stop Berchi and Nobles and Ratty for two straight games, even as good as Edmonton is? We'll step aside. We'll ponder that during the break. 9.46 to go in the third period. The Ed Chanel Cup is in the house. 4-1, oil. 151 in in game seven of the WHL championship. Rhett Brashinsky, Foster, Pedal combined. Right away they get into Matt Carew's kitchen. Boy, that's one, two, three whacks at it. Brashinsky won nothing. Now some goals off the rush, folks. This nice play by Paul Saint-Croix and Natural makes it two nothing. More stuff off the rush. Nice job, Pelsch getting it to St. Croix, 3 nothing. How about Foster says, you guys can score on the rush. So can I. That made it 4 nothing. And this is the only goal the Portland Winterhawks have scored. Oliver Gabriel from Morrow and Leipzig, all of that in the second period. 
And with 9.46 left, you're right, Dan. They were that close, the Oid Edmonton Oil Kings, to winning the WHL championship in only their fifth year. Unbelievable. Kevin and Ryshinsky both have seven points now in this series. Archie leading the way with nine. 25 to go as the puck comes out to the center ice area. Morrow being forced back a little bit. Pouliot, stick handles, pass into space. Raddy trying to chase it down. Raddy and Reinhardt. Raddy comes up with it, head up, back to Morrow, but he can't keep it in. Forced out, too much pressure. That's Foster again. Foster slashes Morrow, then a turnover, but it's offside. Well, that last rush up the ice for Ty Ratty into the offensive zone. He run, runs into Griffin Reinhardt. And I mean, Reinhardt with that long reach, that super, you know, presence of not getting skated hard to the outside. He's not going to get beat. He just forces Ratty all the way back to the blue line. And two guys converge on him, and that puck is out of the Edmonton Oakland zone just like that. Lazar trying to get a stick on it. Water spoon. Nobles. Foster, they're all swatting at the puck there. Foster comes up with it, brings it in over the line. As he goes to the corner, Wotherspoon gets a little bit of position on Foster and then backhanded behind the net. Rakowski. He can't get it past. Four checking of Lazar. Puck goes way up there as the fans begin the let's go Royal Kings chant once more. Eight and a half to go. Here come the Hawks. Just inside the line, delayed offside. Hessek, lots of room to move it. And he'll do just that. The winner Hawks down by three. Do they have any last period surge left in them? Or were they demoralized by that 2 nothing first period deficit? I thought the end of the first period, the Maxwell goal, with just a few seconds to go, took a lot of their steam out. They didn't start that second period very strong, allowed two more. Here's Pouliot, drop pass, Maxwell on the back check. Leipzig was slow to get up a few moments ago after being hit. Morrow's got possession of the puck. Around the boards it goes to Reed. Morrow starts back. He hits the blue line, no further. Scoring chances in this game's got to be pretty low for Portland. As Ruschinski hits the hole, there he goes. Ruschinski trying to get through. Can't. Julian gets the puck up. There's Berchi. Now Leipzig in over the line. Leipzig cuts to the middle. Tries to pass it over to Berchi, but it went through him. His Foster on the back check was reading it. Waterspoon trying to stay in. Does. Puck go can't. It comes out to the neutral zone. Seven minutes exactly. Remaining game seven. As the puck goes to Pesic. Pesic, head up, and over here to Pedal. Pedal will shoot it in nicely soft into that far corner. That'll be the plan. We want the cup is now the chant. When's the last time we heard that in this building? Oh, I remember, but it was a long time ago. Why they're chanting that? They got all that practice with the Oilers. All those banners were looking at the top right hand corner from where we're sitting. Here's Lazar going wide. Lazar going hard. He goes down. Lazar down again. Danielson trying to back check. Merchie to Raddy. Raddy over the line. Raddy holds. Raddy still holds. Raddy fanned on his pass. Comes back to Pouliot. Shot. Ooh, it just went wide in the net. It's on the back of the mesh. They're chanting about we want the cup. I'm happy to tell you that the Ed Chanel Cup did clear customs last night. And there it is. It made the trip to Portland. And it's getting ready to be presented to one of these teams. And it's pretty obvious right now who's going to be getting it. And that would be the first championship to the city of Edmonton since the 05 Eskimos won the Great Cup. I don't know, but have they taken down that sign on the outskirts of the city, the city of champions? I think they have. They may have to put it back down, back uh, up. Yeah, this is pretty special. I don't know when 
have seen as a complete a game by a team in the playoffs as we've seen here tonight. And Pedal's not going to go down on that hit. Quite possibly they saved their very best for the very last. Foster puts the puck in front of the goal over briefly, and Lear gets it and shoots it in. Portland hasn't even had a power play. They might have just only been one in the game. Referees Zalaski and Smith have let these kids decide game number seven. Patty brings the puck in over the line and then dumps it in deep. Five more oil kings come over the boards with just over five minutes remaining until a championship for the oil kings. Unless Portland can somehow make something happen late. Ross towards Reed. Goes back to Wren. Wren throws it at the net. That goes wide. Waterspoon with a long shot. That goes off the target. Wren trying to hold it in. Wren against Pelsch. Pelsch wins that battle. Gets it to Maxwell. Maxwell's out of his own zone. Maxwell throws it in front for Pelsch. Pelsch. His pass knocked off stride. Or at least to the Winterhawks. Lights it go no further than the blue line. Now knocked out of play at the Oil King bench. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The 20 year olds so critical, so important. If you're going to win a championship, these are the guys you got to have. Well, you take a look at Rhett Wyszynski from Edmonton, played all of his career here. Jordan Pedal, they told Derek Waxtell and Bob Green that when you got Jordan Pedal from Swift Current, you were getting a playoff performer who was going to never let you down. And I think the acquisition of Tyler Maxwell was absolutely terrific by Bob Green from the Everett Silver Tips. And a little bit slow, a little bit quiet at some points in the playoffs, but he's been a factor, I think, in this series against the Winterhawks. Meantime, William Wren, Cam Reed, and Oliver Gabriel facing the last few minutes of their major junior career. And there is Riley and Scott by Bouchois, both of the three 20-year-olds on the Portland side. Yeah, here they are, Dan. This is what you were just talking about. What an acquisition Gabriel was. Big guy. What an acquisition Cam Reed from NCAA so clearly said the Western Hockey League was the fastest way to get to the NHL. And William Wren from the University of Denver, what a job he's done as a captain of this hockey club. Congratulations to those three as well. Still lots of coaching going on down at that Edmonton bench. Still four more miles for them to get through as Lazar lugs it out and kicks it into the Portland zone. And the fans notice that one. Carruth tried to play it up and almost got it lost. In fact, he did. Lebeau takes a shot. Morrow knocks that down. I would think they'll try to get the goalie out here real soon for an extra attacker, which they have not had an extra attacker all night. Here comes Peters. Peters gains the line, but no further. Legault will start back, and he'll roll it in. Get the puck deep. Get the puck deep. You don't even have to be at the bench to know they're saying that over and over again. Get it in deep. Make them go 200 feet. Make them score three goals on us. Keep them down there. Listen to the crowd. They know exactly what the Oil Kings have been all about all night long in terms of all three zones. They've just been by far the best. Braddy knocked off stride. Nothing but Oil Kings around that puck. Here's Pedal. What's he going to do with it? On to the net, into the corner, and the Winterhawks will start back once more. There goes the goalie to the extra attacker. He gets to the bench now. Six attackers for Portland. Berkey throws it in front, comes back. Ross hits Pedal. Ross got the puck in the corner. Now Berkey has a hop over his stick. Berkey back to the blue line. Rutkowski. Cross ice it goes. Rotherspoon shoots. Save is made. Lazar gets the puck. Lazar trying to force it out, and he does. Curtis Lazar, great job to force that puck out. Now Kessick's got room. Kessick plays it around the boards. Followed up now by Leipzig. Two minutes and ten seconds remaining. Leipzig in over the blue line. Kessick and Leipzig as they battle for position. Keegan Lowe standing at the side of the net. Legault waiting to see what happens. Ross gets it. Back to the blue line. Morrow. Shot wide. Leipzig tries to get it back of the net. Leipzig 
still in the corner. Backhands it right into Legault. Minute 45 remaining. Morrill puts the puck towards the net. Here's Gabriel. He fell on his knees. He lost the puck and it shot down the ice. This will be icing on Edmonton. seconds away from winning the Ed Chanel Cup. Then, its coaching ability is measured by your team's work ethic. Both of these coaches are A+. Plus. Hard work, sacrifice, not real popular concepts in today's world, and these two guys have had it in spades this year. Listen to this play. They beat Kruti in four. They beat Brandon in four. They beat Moose Jaw in five. Away from beating Portland in seven. Reinhardt off the boards. Morrow holds it in. Braddy swatting at a lost. It comes out to center. Berchi rolling puck shot. Berchi going in. Still Berchi with it. Throws it in front. Right to Foster who flips it down the ice. He will not have enough steam for icing. Let's go, Oil Kings is now the chance. One minute left in game seven. Last minute of the play. Brady in over the line. Broke his stick and he slams it against the wall. There she takes a shot. That's a save by Brossois. Goes back to Morrow. His shot whistles wide of the net. Nobles comes up with it. In front of the net. It goes to Gurnett. Off the boards. Held in by Portland. Ross swats at it. Verchi's got it. Taken off the puck. Followed up by Pouliot. Half a minute to go. Gabriel shot. Francois with a save. Gabriel again with the puck. Nobles can't get it. And the puck comes out. Goes back in. Goes down the ice. And we got a fight behind the play. Foster, I believe, in Ross for sure. And the frustration of Ross. And Pendle tries to get involved too. Upset to Ross at this stage of the series would let his frustration show in this way. And Pendle still wants to get it, Ross. Look at this. And Gabriel wants to get it, Pendle. Ah, this is unfortunate. I don't know what started it. The puck went way down the ice. I don't know why Foster would start it. I could see if Ross frustration, but. Ross is not going to be here for the handshake. You know, I would have expected Brad Ross certainly to have a fight or two in the playoffs. And in this series, that's not surprising. He's got 12 goals in the postseason. But I am surprised he hasn't been more of a factor offensively for his hockey club. Tonight, hasn't he? On the big screen, they're showing the cup with two RCMP officers holding it. The big celebration going on at the Edmonton bench. Well, how's that for a five year plan? My goodness. The Edmonton Oil Kings are going to be champions. They're going to the Memorial Cup. They're going to win the Edmonton Oil Cup. And there is the history of the Game 7s over the years. This one in full control by Edmonton from the National Anthem on. They lost last night in a nail biter. We thought it was emotionally draining. It was, but only for one team. The team of the Red, the Portland Winterhawks. 
This white team, the Edmonton Oil Kings, they look completely fresh. They look like they were playing game one yeah. of round one yeah. tonight. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Dan. That, that, that's exactly how prepared they were. I mean, they talk about doing the simple things. Yeah, fine. But it's a lot easier sometimes said than done to do the simple things. They just made a lot of right choices. They combined beautifully offensively when they had to. Defensively superb. Last puck drop of the season. It's been a while, but the City of Champions have a new team to celebrate. It's the modern-day Oil Kings, who are kings of the Western Hockey League. Edmonton wins the Edge Genesis Cup. Unlike the last time we had a seven-game series, there's no consolation prize. 
there's no back door in the cup. That's right. I mean, that was the year Vancouver was hosting, and they lost in double overtime. And they got to continue to play. In fact, they would play Medicine Hat twice more and then beat them in the championship. So both teams had a chance at hoisting a trophy that particular year. Not this time for the Portland Winterhawks. They will fly home tomorrow. And the Edmonton Oil Kings will fly to Quebec on Wednesday, opening the Memorial Cup on Friday. Yeah, they played the host team Friday night. Well, it's a little bit of a turnaround. Not a big one. And they go from a marathon into a sprint. We played a WHL championship series of seven games. That's about as long and tough a grind as you can get. You get to that Memorial Cup, and it's it can be over quickly. Two coaches are going to come together. The two coaches will come together in just a moment or two. We'll maybe get a shot of that. There's Mike Johnson at the end. And here is Peter Labardius. With me, one of the stars of the series, and now a Western Hockey League champion, Captain Mark Pesic. We chatted briefly before the start of the game. I said, your team takes its cues from you. You sure picked a good time to play your best full overall game of the playoffs. I think we all did that. We did a great job uh, going at him for the uh, full 60 minutes tonight. We didn't let off him in the third, and uh, look where we are now. What allowed you as a team to execute that well? Uh, we just uh, broke it down and played simple hockey, and uh, we worked We worked our bags off, and uh, I can't really say much else. How key in your mind was the early goal, especially coming off the disappointing loss a night ago? Absolutely, that's a huge one. We were uh, we were going at him pretty hard, and to get that one to break through the uh, barrier there uh, was huge. You spent a long time here. This must be a pretty great feeling. Unbelievable. I mean, look at the fans now. It's come a long way since uh, my first season here. Go enjoy with your teammates. Thanks a lot. Mark Pesic and the Edmonton Oil Kings in their fifth year on their way to Shawinigan and the Memorial Cup. Yeah, you can't draw a better five-year plan than that. Bob Green, general manager, his hockey staff. Obviously, congratulations to them and the entire organization. Imagine that. Five years ago, we were here with our shot cameras. The very first night, the Kootenai Ice were here. They scored at the buzzer and won that game. And then five years after that, we're here watching them win game seven. I wouldn't have thought that, really. Not that the Edmonton and All Kings were not a, you know, a competitive team early, but there's a lot of losses when you've got nothing but, you know, uh, uh, representing the WHL expansion players that you build your team around. It was going to be a long Hewan process, song. but boy, this is a team and that got it together. Tire, wow. Let's pick Mr. up the team. Andrew now, so Bolton. A trophy presentations down at ice level. And now for the presentation of the 2012 Western Hockey League Playoff Series Most Valuable Player Award to be presented by WHL Vice President of Hockey Operations, Mr. Richard Dirksen. The Most Valuable Player Award is presented to the individual judged to be the most outstanding player of the 2012 WHL Playoffs. The Most Valuable Player Award for the 2012 WHL Playoffs is number 31, Little Bessois of your Edmonton Oil Kings. We would now ask the alternate captains of the WHL champion Edmonton Oil Kings to come forward for the official presentation of the WHL Championship Series commemorative plaques. On behalf of Cal Tire and Husky, WHL presenting sponsors of the WHL Championship Series, Mr. Hugh Armstrong and Mr. Andrew Bolton will now present the WHL champion Edmonton Oil Kings Alternate captains, Travis Awanek, TJ Foster, and Keegan Lowe with WHL Championship Series Plaques. We're going to award the plaques first, and the League Championship will Trophy will be coming in as Edmonton gets ready to hoist to the big engine of WHL. Yeah, I want to go back to Laurent Brassois for just a minute. Yeah, 
I definitely agree with what Peter Labardis has been saying a lot on our broadcast. I think Hockey Canada has to have Ladies noticed what that young man has done. He's an 18-year-old, he's a 19-year-old next year. You may be looking at a strong candidate for the World Junior Team goaltending position for Team Canada next year. There's the big trophy. By the way, hats off to his goalie coach, Justin Schwartz. Probably doesn't get very much credit. MVP, the goalie coach should get some of the credit there. Look at that Ed Chinoff Cup, which was renamed after the longtime former president, Ed Chinoff, a few years ago. He meant so much to the WHL. And what a moment a year ago when this cup was handed to his son, Jeff Chinoff, the general manager of the Kootenai Ice. And remember, Ed Chenoff, Bill, he owned the Edmonton Ice franchise before they moved to Kootenai. So there's a little bit of a tie in there in terms of this trophy in Edmonton. Ed would have been very pleased about that. Can touch this one, though. They will touch this one during the Western for Eastern Conference Final. They wouldn't lay a finger on it. Or in, well, two years in a row, they've tried different strategies. It didn't work. There's a great photo. And the Ed Chanel trophy. Ed Chanel so prominent. There you go in the scholastic program, too, that this league offers. And by the way, when you look at that celebration, that is the Western Hockey League scholastic team of the year. Congratulations on all counts to the Edmonton Oil Kings. And time for the victory march. And nobody's left the building now. Mark Kessick taking that thing for a ride, and he hands it to Jordan Pedal. Yeah, those 20-year-olds got to get it first and foremost after the captain. Tyler Maxwell waiting for it, and he takes it, and you know Roshinsky should get it next. What a thrill. What a thrill for those kids. Roshinsky was part of the first-year team, and that's him with it. And that's that little Ukrainian dance he does. Better be careful. There's helmets out there. I don't want anybody to wipe out. They still have more hockey to play. And I think they got through this series relatively unscathed. I mean, for a seven-gamer, it wasn't really tough attrition-wise on injuries. I mean, we don't know all the, the bumps and bruises, but only Raddy missed one game, and that was earlier on in the series. Pretty much everybody got through it. And you can't say that about every seven-game series that's played. Michael St. Croix, the leading scorer for the Oil Kings all year long. And he had a real good final, too. He came on in the later stages of the final. There was a big game in Portland where he had a couple of huge assists. And he never looked back after that. Let's now hear from Andy Neal with the MVP. Andy. Thank you, Godly Dan. Loren Brochois, playoff MVP, just to cap it off. But what about the moment when that final horn went and you were a WHL champion? I, you honestly can't even explain it. I, you can't put it into words. I mean, you just want to, like I said, I got, I got, I'm speechless. It's just such a good feeling. You know, I, I can't explain it, like I said. I'm just going to enjoy this while, while it lasts. How about the significance of the MVP? You already won one in the Eastern Conference side, and now playoff MVP. Yeah, that's just the cherry on top of the cake, you know. I thought tonight we played unbelievably defensive, and our guys did a tremendous job. I didn't even think I had to do that much. You know, I can't thank them enough. They played outstanding throughout the playoffs, you know. We win as a team. Coming after the loss last night, I mean, what was the message that the coaching staff had for you guys going into Game 7 tonight? You know, that was our gimme. I mean, we had two games to, to close it out, and, uh, you know, not to panic. You know, we've got this far doing what we do. We just not change a thing. I mean, just keep uh, staying the course like uh, Hammy keeps uh, preaching, and uh, that's exactly what we did, and, you know, it, it paid off. There's so much talk about how good you guys are going to be next year, so how crazy an idea to, is that? that uh, this team could be even better next year. Yeah, no, that's the word on the street. I mean, some of our younger guys, you having the year of experience, it's going to be huge. I mean, you know, I feel like I've come a long way just uh, with that year, and it's it's pretty exciting, but right now I'm living in the moment. Congrats. Enjoy the win. Thank you. There's Loren Brosaw. Back to you, Danibel. So consistent, 
super confident, seldom scrambly, doesn't guess much. Laurent Brassois, definitely a valuable and most valuable member of this series for this team. Look at that celebration once again. I know uh, this is a day about moms, but I'm thinking about Laurent Brassois' dad, who's battling MS right now. What a moment it must be for their family. Let's go back downstairs. Is that you, Peter? I sure have you guys. Jordan Peddle, when you were acquired by this team from Swift Current, did you ever envision this moment right now? I mean, that's what we've been playing for all year right now. Um, once I got here, I realized we had an incredible team and that we had the potential to be here and uh, a little bit of hard work and all the guys on the team put in everything they got and we got here and it's an incredible feeling. Fair to say that you played your best hockey of the year in this championship series. You were a contributor every game. Why'd you play so well when it mattered the most? This is my last crack at it. This is uh, this is it right here. Um, I've always liked the big, big games, and uh, I just went out and played as hard as I could every shift, and good things happened for me. Enjoy the moment, young man. You deserve it. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Andy. Thanks, Peter. You go from a 20-year-old to a young man whose career is really taking off. Curtis Lazar, congratulations. What are you thinking right now? Uh, it's great. You know, I did this for my mom. It's Mother's Day. I didn't have time to get her anything because we were busy, but <laughs> this one's for her and just for all the guys. What about the game tonight and the way you guys were able to respond after the tough loss an evening ago? Uh, it was good. You know, that last game in Portland really had our sets. So we got the nerves out that game. And coming here, we just we had a business type approach and we got the job done. You're mentioning uh, after the second period, you didn't want to take that lead for granted. What was said in the dressing room to get you guys ready for the third period up three? Uh, just stay the course. And, you know, you got to keep numbers up high because, you know, the bear team right there, explosive guys, and so just have numbers, the D zone, and just play yeah, so all the high percentage plays. Steen did a nice job uh, containing that line who had been so productive early in the series in the last couple of games. What was the success there? I think just take away their time and space. You know, they're two unbelievable hockey players who are, they're going to go on to the pro for sure. And but yeah, just we bared down. And, you know, we've wanted it so bad, and we got the job done. Congratulations, Curtis. Thank you. There's Curtis Lazar, Peter Lombardius. Let's send it over to you. Here's the bench boss, a very proud one. Head coach Derek Laxdahl knows what it's like to play in this type of a game. Coach. I'm guessing you can only dream about laying out a game plan and having it executed the way your kids executed it in the biggest game of the year, because that's how it seemed from where I was. You know what, right from start to finish, they were outstanding, you know. Uh, Portland Winter Hawks, congratulations. They had a great series. It was an unbelievable seven game series, and our guys just stuck to the game plan, and they, what a response from last night. They were down a little bit, but they came to the rink prepared, and then when they stepped on the ice, they were ready to play. You've had some good senses in this series in terms of feeling like one game would go to overtime. How confident were you that your kids were ready to handle it? Because there's no question on the airplane last night, that was a tough one. You knew you were close to putting it to bed one night ago. Well, you know what, our guys just, uh, they were a little bit down. We didn't close it last night. We gave up a late goal, but they came tonight and played a great game. They defended, they, they attacked, they established a lead early in the game, got the confidence, didn't take one penalty tonight. When you don't take a penalty, you know they acted out in the game plan well. How good was your structure and the fact that you were able to shut down the big line, not just tonight, but two nights in a row, and, and I know how much respect you have for those guys. Those guys are outstanding. They're future NHLers. Mark Pesek, Keegan Lowe, Rachinsky's line, Paddle, or TJ Foster, they scored a couple big goals against him. They were outstanding tonight. Enjoy it for a night and then get ready for Shawinigan. Congratulations. All right, thank you very much. Head coach Derek Laxtall getting into the picture and will allow you to take a peek at that as the Edmonton Oil Kings have captured their first Western Hockey League championship since they came back into the league as we go upstairs again to Dan Russell and Bill Wilms, guys. Wow. That's the photo everybody loves. That's the photo the Edmonton Oilers invented all those years ago. Impromptu on the ice, and ever since that, every championship team at every level gathers for that photo where you're all together at the end. And that's the one that often is the most cherished. Rossois getting in there at the end, and the MVP almost hiding the trophy. Why not? He stopped everything else. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, Dad, I mean, that trophy that they that they have amongst them there, in my opinion, you and I talked about this. I think the Memorial Cup is just a cherry on the top. This is what you build for. This is what Bob Green builds for. This trophy, winning this league, this is a top 
trophy to win. The fact that you get to play some more hockey, great, wonderful. You regroup, you start all over again. I don't think one of those kids was thinking beyond this game tonight. And boy, I agree, Derek Laxdell had his team as prepared to play as you will ever see. One last thought, scary thought. That team could be right back there next year. They lose their three 20-year-olds, possibly Mark Pesic. The rest are all back. And the operative word tonight, I think Peter hit it, structure. They were great in all three zones. The better team from drop of the puck till the very end. Portland only had 20 shots on goal. The big line doesn't get anything for two nights in a row. So here's the third WHL team in Edmonton. You had the old... Oil Kings had moved to Portland all those years ago. You had the Edmonton Ice that moved to Kootenai, and they won the championship last year. In the third go-around, you've got Edmonton winning the modern-day Oil Kings, capturing the Ed Chanel's Cup. Let's go back downstairs. Here he is, the architect of the five-year plan and a happy general manager, Bob Green. I can't even imagine how proud you must be right now. Well, extremely proud of these players. Uh, they had a great playoff, great run this year, really, and... Uh, you know, we hope to get to this point, but uh, of course you're never really sure and uh, they persevered and then their coaching staff did a great job with them. I know you've had a tendency to watch some games on your laptop. Where were you tonight throughout the course of it? I was all over on TV, upstairs live, I was all over the place. I asked head coach Sarah Claxtall, I know you've probably seen it the same way, what more could you ask than to play your best game, I'm guessing, of the year when it matters the most? Absolutely, and that's kind of the way these kids have been all year. You know, I, I think, you know, we, we were a little worried about uh, how we'd be after last night's game, but, uh, you know, by the time we got back to Edmonton, the kids were good and they were ready to go and uh, got a decent enough sleep, I guess, and uh, they played a great game today, really uh, not giving up a whole lot and, and making the best of our opportunities. We had a long chat one day in this building during the Moose Jaw series, and I asked you, what's allowed the plan to come together and maybe even a year ahead of schedule? And you looked at me and you said, a lot of the kids that were still here in that 16-win season, I'm guessing you don't feel any differently about that now. No, no, and uh, they get a lot of credit. They put, you know, it was a tough year for them, but uh, they played a lot. They played in a lot of great situations for young guys and uh, made them better players. And, and uh, you know, so you don't regret that at all. I think that's part of expansion. I've had that conversation with a lot of other guys, too. Year three is usually the worst. And it uh, certainly was in our case, but uh, it doesn't matter anymore. Congratulations. Good luck in Shawinigan. Thanks, Peter. Bob Green, a happy general manager. He and his mates, guys, on their way to Quebec, and they couldn't be happier. Right. We call it a five-year plan. Technically, for Bob, it's a six-year plan. He was the head scout of the Mesonat Tigers, and a year before they started playing, he became the Edmonton Oil Kings general manager, and then they started playing, and five years later, that's the scene on the ice. What a scene. Great job at drafting. We talked about it a couple times. It does bear... Pointing out one more time that they regressed one year, year three, went down to 16 wins after a couple decent years to get out of the gate. Never panicked, changed coaches, brought in Derek Laxdahl, and now this. I mean, it is uh, it is a remarkable, remarkable run. And honestly, folks, the more you see this Edmonton Oil King team, the more you literally love them. They, 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 were, they were, again, so prepared after getting into Edmonton. What time last night? Three in the morning? Come out of the six o'clock game and hoist that trophy in a way that wasn't up and down the ice. It wasn't changing, exchanging scoring chances. It wasn't run and gun. It was surgical the way they took them apart. And that's tonight. And, and we have to say that they were also very impressive in Portland. I and mean, that was a new environment for them. They had to go down there and in games three and four, they got a split, that Rashinsky goal in overtime in game four. You have to look back at that maybe as the biggest moment of the series for them. Yeah, you know, for me, honestly, it was game three, the way Edmonton stormed back. Do you remember they came back in that third period and I thought, my goodness, this is a tough environment to do that. You have every reason to, you know, kind of fold it up and try to, you know, forget about it. They came back, they got 